Pyro is a good-for-nothing loser and the only failure in his group. Everyone makes fun of him for not being able to pilot a Franks until a hot girl named Zero Two appears and their compatibility with each other puts all the other pilots to shame. However, Hyro soon discovered the harsh reality of Zero Two when he begins to transform into a monster after piloting with her. Zero Two is on her way back to Plantation 13 and comments on how she wants to swim in an ocean. However, Nana lets her know that there is no ocean at Plantation 13 and she will have to get used to using a shower. On the other hand, Hyro is present at the Plantation 13 artificial forest and thinks about a bird known as Giant that shares wings and is unable to fly if the male and female don't support each other. Meanwhile, Zorom informs his other team members about the parasite called Partner Eliminated and how her partner meets their demise after their third ride. They then discuss how Hyro didn't show up for the briefing and will most likely leave without saying a word. Dr. Franks along with Nana and the others finally land at the plantation and they soon realize that Zero Two managed to run away from them. On the other hand, Hyro is wandering around the forest and accidentally comes across a lake and notices a girl swimming. He goes to check it out and realizes that the girl is none other than Zero Two. He is surprised to see her fully commando and seeing a girl for the first time makes some questionable desires come in his mind. After she gets out of the lake, Hyro informs her about how he is not able to pilot a Franks as he doesn't have such abilities anymore. Zero Two replies that she is pretty unique from others due to the horns on her head as well. Unfortunately, their conversation is put on hold when the authorities arrive and take Zero Two back. Later that day, Zorom and the others stand in front of the adults they admire so much and the person they call Papa gives some words of motivation to the newly formed pilots. Simultaneously, Naomi, Hiro's previous partner is being sent away but Hiro gets the privilege to stay. Naomi blames him for everything that has happened to her and when Hiro tries to go away with her, she refuses to let him make a decision out of pity. At the same time, it could go along with the other team members step inside their franks when suddenly a Klaxosaur appears and attacks the plantation. Apparently, there is not one but two Klaxosaurs and the pilots are stopped from stepping outside for the moment. Out of nowhere, a Frank steps outside and starts fighting the Klaxosaur with a worry in its mind. The Frank tries to defend itself from the beam fired by Klaxosaur but it results in it tanking the damage instead. The Frank falls on the plantation and from inside, Zero Two emerges. Now that her partner is completely useless and can't fight anymore due to the three-time pilot curse, Zero Two tries to pilot the Franks on her own. However, Hiro is just present beside her and volunteers to become the male pilot. She takes him up on his offer and the shape of the Franks transforms, making it even more powerful than it already was. Dr. Franks watches the whole event and praises Strelizia, the Franks Zero Two pilot, for being the greatest. Without breaking a sweat, Strelizia takes care of the Klaxosaur and eliminates it, saving the lives of everyone present at the plantation. The next morning, Hiro returns to the dorm of their team and finds Ikigo sitting at the door front. She informs him about how Naomi was uninjured during the whole Klaxosaur incident and asks Hiro if he was the one piloting Strelizia back then. He replies that he is still unsure as Hiro was unconscious the whole time and Ikigo warns him about the three times piloting curse that Zero Two carries. He then heads inside and finds Zero Two enjoying her food with a ton of honey on it. She then sits next to Hiro and calls him darling, making everyone present surprised. Afterward, Nana arrives and announces that she will be the caretaker of their group before Nana takes Zero Two away. Hyra requests Zero Two to let her ride the Franks again to which Nana replies that it is not up to him and all he can do is wait for the orders. On the other hand, Papa and the other higher-ups discuss the rare event of Hyro not sustaining any damage after piloting with Zero Two which is a rare occurrence. In the end, they decide to wait for a little longer and observe things before making a concrete decision. On the other hand, both the boys and girls change into their battle uniforms and step inside their franks with their partners. While they are practicing their movements and training for the time they will face Klaxosaurs, Hyro is still present at the plantation. After they are done with training, Ikigo runs into Zero Two and tells her to stay away from Hyro. However, Zero Two doesn't pay attention to her and leaves after licking Ikigo's face, commenting on how she has a sweet flavor to her. On the other hand, the boys are playing outside and discussing how a failure like Hyro can never pilot a Franks with a hottie like Zero Two. Soon after, Hyro arrives and Zorum hits him with the ball, which results in a fight between the two. Luckily, Ikigo and Goro arrive and break up the fight. Later that day, Nana gathers everyone and tells Hyro that he will get another chance to pilot a Franks with anyone present. Zero Two volunteers to be his partner but so does Ikigo, who wins the argument after mentioning that Zero Two is still not a part of their group. Zorom and Miku are picked as the other Franks who will be fighting them to access Hyro's abilities. After getting in the Franks, Hyro and Ikigo manage to move the Franks and just when the battle is about to start, it shuts down. Hyro starts getting frustrated and Ikigo asks Hyro to remember something unique he did while riding with Zero Two. 
The only thing he remembers is the kiss and after informing Ikigo about it, she decides to give it a try. Even though she is trembling with nervousness, Ikigo kisses Hiro but the results remain the same and they are still not able to pilot it. At the same time, Miku and Zorum start messing around with each other and their Franks falls on top of Hiro's Franks and the battle ends up as a draw. After the mock battle, Hiro gets tested and finds out that there are still no issues with his physical body. Hachai and Nana discuss how Hiro is the only pilot who sustained this low amount of damage after pairing up with Zero Two and thinks that he might be a rare specimen. On the other hand, Hiro asks Goru to let Ikigo know that what happened was not her fault and further tells Goru that he will try to partner up with Zero Two once again. Goru warns him about what happens to people who partner with her but he doesn't care and wants to try it once again. Back at the dorm, everyone mocks Hiro for being a failure but Ikigo defends him, saying that he was the one who saved their lives even if he was unconscious. Mitsuru replies that he did nothing special and was just taken along the ride, advising Ikigo to accept reality. Meanwhile, after Hiro is done practicing, he comes across Zero Two who is sleeping at a random spot. However, she soon wakes up and takes him to a place where only S-class members like her can go. Apparently, the place she takes him is the view of the city that is present inside the plantation and it is Hiro's first time seeing it. She jokes about how it would be best for them to run away and later returns to the meeting room when Nana calls everyone. She informs them that they have received their first mission to fight Klaxosaurus and reassures them that they aren't the huge ones but the tiny ones that even they can take care of. She further reveals that Strelizia will not be a part of this mission and with that being said, everyone enters their franks. Surprisingly, Mitsuru and Akuno can't power up their franks and are forced to withdraw while the other three frankses enter the tunnel. Back at the headquarters, Mitsuru suggests switching partners but Nana tells him that it is not that big of an issue and will be resolved eventually. On the other hand, the franks runs into a Klaxosaur and easily takes down the smaller one. Everyone praises them for doing a good job but Zero Two comments on how it is still not over. Her judgment was correct as a number of smaller Klaxosaur arrived and Miku lost consciousness, leaving only two Franks to fight all of them. Zero Two tells Nana to let her be a part of this mission or the whole group will eventually meet their demise. Nana approves and Mitsuru volunteers to be her partner, saying that even he can partner up with her if a good-for-nothing simp like Hiro can. Soon after, Miku finally gains consciousness and finds herself being protected by others who are trying their best to hold the Klaxosaur off. Upon hearing the news about Strelizia's arrival, Ikigo loses her focus which results in their Franks losing its power. In the nick of time, Strelizia arrives and Mitsuru starts bragging about how he is piloting it so well. Zero Two doesn't like his attitude and decides to use more of her powers. Nana notices Mitsuru's condition getting worse and orders the other Franks to retrieve Strelizia. Eventually, all of them exit the tunnel and Zero Two comes out of the Franks smiling while Mitsuru has lost consciousness. After one ride with Zero Two, Mitsuru starts losing his mind and thinks that Zero Two was trying to eat him alive during their time together. He hasn't been normal and is not eating his food, telling Hiro that he will be an idiot if he tries to ride with her again. After seeing his condition, Ikigo asks Hiro if he still wants to ride with Zero Two and she finally gives up warning him after Hiro agrees to ride with her again. On the other hand, Hachai and Nana confront Zero Two for using unnecessary power during her mission with Mitsuru but Zero doesn't seem to care about it. Nana further tells Zero Two that she will not be able to ride with Hiro again as the higher-ups have requested her presence at the front line. Later the group members discuss how Hiro wants to stay with Zero Two even though she is not a human. However, Ikigo interrupts the discussion and advises everyone to focus on themselves as they are still not able to complete the mission without Strelizia's help. Later that day, Hiro is taking a bath when Zero Two barges in and jumps in the bath with him. She corners him and asks Hiro if he is willing to become her partner or is just like the others and only sees her as a monster. Before Hiro gets the chance to reply, a warning signal is made about the arrival of a Klaxosaur. Mitsuru tries his best to pilot the Franks as well but surprisingly, Strelizia is still not allowed to join the battle. The others manage to bring the Klaxosaur down but it gets back up as they fail to break the core. While Zero Two and Hiro are watching the battle from the control room, several guards arrive and are ready to take back Zero Two to the front lines. Zero Two says goodbyes to Hiro and leaves but he still can't accept it and runs after her. Seeing how he won't be able to physically save her due to the locked door, Hiro shouts at Zero Two, letting her know that after piloting a Franks with her, he realized that his wish was not to simply ride a Franks but to ride one with her. This statement moves her heart and she decides to stay with him. Zero Two manages to get away from the guards and runs towards Strelizia along with Hiro. Both of them enter Strelizia and go out to fight the Klaxosaur even when everyone orders her not to. This is the first time Hiro is actually controlling a Franks instead of losing his consciousness like a complete loser. Apparently, there are two worm-shaped Klaxosaur and Strelizia takes one of them while the others take the second Klaxosaur. Strelizia tries to pull it out of the ground 
only to figure out that it is one big worm with both its ends emerging from the ground. Afterward, they come up with a plan to stop and Ikigo along with the other group members holds the Klaxosaur in a still position, allowing Strelizia to rip it into shreds from the inside, eventually breaking its core. Even though Nana can't believe that Strelizia broke Papa's orders, this also proves the fact that Hyro is compatible with Zero Two which is something that has never happened before. An announcement was made about the kissing that will be occurring between Plantation 13 and Plantation 26. The whole group wonders about what kissing means and Akuno reveals that it is the transfer of magma fuel reserves from one plantation to another. Afterward, a grand ceremony is held between the two plantations and the kid from the other plantations also attends. The next morning, Goru tries to wake Hyro up and notices that he has developed a fever but Hiro tries to hide it and acts as if nothing is wrong. Later, the group discusses the upcoming battle and Ikigo comments on how Hiro did so well in their last battle. This makes the other group members praise him as well and he finally makes up with Zorom after their fight. During breakfast, Zero Two sits on the boy's side of the table and forces Futoshi to sit on the girl's side. Everyone seems uncomfortable seeing Hiro receive the lovely treatment by Zero Two, only to notice that he is not the only one as Kokoro is also helping the fat boy to become even fatter. Later that day, Nana tells Ikigo that Zero Two will be living in the dorm with them from now on as Papa gave her permission. Kokoro enters the garden to water the plants and notices Mitsuru taking his meds to stay calm after his experience with Zero Two. She tries to ask if he is doing okay but Mitsuru shuts her down, asking Kokoro to leave him alone. The kids from Plantation 26 finally meet up with Ikigo's team from Plantation 13. They mention that the Plantation team is a makeshift team and the only team where they call each other by nicknames instead of their code names. Additionally, it is the only team among the other plantations that has franks of different shapes and colors, which is something the Plantation 26 squad can't understand. Nana and Hachai check Hiro's health and realize that the yellow blood cells in his body have significantly increased and it is a miracle that he is even alive. Nana mentions that it will be dangerous for him to ride with Zero Two but Hachai lets her know that they will be needing Strelizia in the upcoming battle no matter what. Goru also walks into his room and notices Hiro struggling with his worsening health. He advises Hiro to never ride Strelizia again but he refuses, letting him know that this is the first time he has felt so alive in a long time. Later, Hachai holds a meeting and informs both groups that there will be around 100 to 150 Klaxosaurs in the area, and they will need to take care of all of them. Furthermore, the Plantation 13 team will act as a backup while the Plantation 26 team will take the fighting role. Hatchai has decided to give the most important role to Strelizia and hearing its name freaks the leader of the Plantation 26 group. Simultaneously, Zero Two arrives and he confronts her for now caring about her group members. However, Hiro reassures the leader that he will control Zero Two from going berserk. At night, Goru can't seem to sleep and goes outside, just to notice Ikigo taking Zero into the forest. After taking her far enough, Ikigo tells Zero Two to not push Hiro that much and seeing how she doesn't care, Ikigo loses her cool and ends up slapping her. The next morning, Zero Two meets up with Hiro at the same spot they first met and asks Hiro about his final decision before riding with her for the third time. Luckily, he agrees to ride with her which makes Zero Two overjoyed. Hatchai notices a weird and humongous looking Klaxosaur among the army of 100 Klaxosaurs they are supposed to encounter in the upcoming battle. After putting on their gear for the battle, Ikigo asks Goru about Hiro and he forces her to stay and talk to Hiro until he arrives. Ikigo can't seem to say the things that are on her mind and the conversation ends after Hiro praises her for doing a good job as their leader and expects even better results from her. Finally, the battle commences and the group from Plantation 26 moves forward to deal with the Klaxosaur while Ikigo's group stays behind and deals with the leftovers. Seeing the teamwork of Squad 26 makes score when the others realize just how bad they are and the conversation is interrupted when Klaxosaurs start coming their way. As expected, the teamwork of Squad 13 is as bad as it can get but luckily their leader, Ikigo manages to help out those in trouble. During the battle, the leader of Squad 26 takes a look at Ikigo's fighting style and doesn't understand why a skilled teen code like her is a part of a makeshift test team. Meanwhile, Zero Two and Hiro are watching the fight from their franks and Hiro asks Zero Two the reason he fights. Zero Two replies that her enjoyment of fighting might be linked to her being a monster and she asks Hiro the same question and he gives the boring old reply, saying that he fights for the sake of their so-called papa. With that being said, Strelizia decides to join the battle as well but after eliminating some Klaxosaurs, Hiro's condition starts to worsen and gets to the point where he can't pilot Strelizia properly. However, he puts everything he has left and manages to fight for a little longer. After eliminating all the small fries, everyone focuses on the huge Klaxosaur and it changes its shape and reveals that it is a Gutenberg class. Squad 26 starts to struggle to fight that huge thing and is ordered to fall back and let Squad 13 deal with it. 
They come up with a plan to restrict the Klaxosaur's movements and let Strelizia cut through using its spear. Hyro does manage to attack the Klaxosaur with the spear but the damage seems to be unnoticeable. In return, the Klaxosaur throws Strelizia away and crushes it with a literal rocket launcher. This results in Hyro losing his consciousness and Strelizia stops functioning. However, the Klaxosaur doesn't stop and keeps on hitting and crushing Strelizia again and again. The connection between Zero Two and Hyro is lost, making everyone think that Hyro has been eliminated. Watching this whole scene results in Ikigo losing her will to fight and her Frank stops functioning as well. While Hyro is unconscious, he dreams about Zero Two where she seems sad and refuses to talk to him. He then gains consciousness and realizes that she has been trying to fight the Klaxosaur and pilot Strelizia on her own, which is putting an enormous amount of load on her body. This makes Hyro remove all the thoughts of giving up and the disease that was spreading in his body starts retracting. He finally stops Zero Two from suffering anymore and the two of them start piloting Strelizia once again. This time, they completely turn the tables on the Klaxosaur and the rest of Squad 13 members make sure to restrict the Klaxosaur's movements as well. Strelizia cuts through it once again and this time, Zero Two and Hyro manage to break the core. After the battle ends, the whole squad comes running and Ikigo gives Hyro a big hug as she thought that she won't be seeing him ever again. Ikigo mentions that after successfully connecting with Plantation 26, they are given a special vacation at a secluded beach where the children see the ocean for the first time. Zorom and Futoshi are excited. Ikigo explains they have been living under extreme stress since arriving at the plantation. She tells Goro that Nana will pick them up in the morning. Goro wonders if it's some kind of training, but Ikigo smiles and says they should enjoy themselves anyway. Zero Two pulls Hiro into the water, and they laugh as she splashes him. Although Ikigo feels uncomfortable about Zero Two, she can see that Zero Two is what he needs. On the other hand, Gorilla is surprised at Hiro's ability. One notes that Zero Two's search for a partner has finally ended. Hatchai says to Nana that one of Ape's special forces has become a plantation's exclusive parasite. Nana introduces Hiro to Dr. Franks. She also tries introducing Hiro to Nine Alpha. However, Hatchai tells the doctor that Strelizia and Code 2 are transferred into Plantation 13. When Hatchai announces that they're officially partners, Zero Two hugs Hiro. Hatchai and Nana don't know what the doctor is planning, but Nana wonders why he decided to send the children to the beach on their own. Afterward, Futoshi remarks that he thought double digits were different from triple digits which offends Gora. Kokoro and Miku collide and fall to the ground. The boys then look at Hiro and Zero Two swimming together. Hiro follows Zero Two further into the water, feeling embarrassed as he looks at her. She asks what's wrong, and Hiro mentions that she looks good. Zero Two thanks him for all he did for her, and Hiro remembers their earlier conversation. Dr. Franks warns Hiro not to let emotions consume him if he wants to always be her partner. Zero Two teasingly leans in to pretend to kiss asking what he was expecting. She explains that a kiss is a declaration of belonging reserved for the one you love, and asks if Hiro has kissed someone else. Akuno pulls out a book and tells Ikigo to enjoy herself but Ikigo runs off. As Akuno begins to read, Mitsuru scoffs at her and asks if she came there just to read. She says that she isn't interested in goofing around. Mitsuru says that Hiro who once looked suicidal looks like part of the group now. He then tells her that he has found something interesting. The boys toss Hiro on the ground, questioning him about a kiss. Hiro struggles to explain, simply stating it's when two people stick their mouths together. Before Zorom can attempt an experiment, Mitsuru leads the squad into a secret passageway. Kokoro expresses her fear of the dark, prompting a cold response from Mitsuru. However, Goro ponders relationships, observing Hiro and Zero Two. Ikuno surprises Ikigo by touching her cheek. The squad discovers an abandoned city, with Zorom noting its difference from their own. Kokoro questions if people live there, but Mitsuru dismisses the idea. Zorom, Miku, Futoshi, and Ikuno find a mansion resembling their environment. Futoshi notices Kokoro is missing. Ikigo is startled and asks her what she means. She answers Kiss and says that she probably isn't ready for it yet. Ikigo says that she has too. Zero Two asks who she has done it with. Before she can answer, Goro calls her. As they sit around the campfire, Hiro asks why they think humanity abandoned the surface. Mitsuru reassures Hiro that Papa moved people into plantations to protect mankind. Zorom gushes over the fact that they are the ones being able to protect adults from harm with their franks. As the group sleeps together, Ikigo, wide awake, notices Hiro heading to the beach and follows him. Walking along the shore, Ikigo points out Orion and talks about Hiro teaching her about the stars. Hiro recalls their promise to see it together after leaving the garden. 
However, Ikigo expresses determination for the squad's success, urging Hiro not to focus solely on Zero Two. About to confess her feelings, Hiro redirects her attention to shooting stars. Meanwhile, the rest of the squad sleeps. Hiro says that if you wish on a shooting star, it'll come true and asks Ikigo what she wishes for. The parasites are battling a Klaxosaur, and it spews goo that leaks into the cockpits, melting the girls' parasite suits in front of the boys. Zorum, Hiro, and Goro are shocked in space out when they see Miku, Zero Two, and Nikigo being exposed. Mitsuru is indifferent but blushes a little and looks away as Akuno is exposed. The girls, not realizing what happened, wonder why the Klaxosaurs aren't attacking. Ikigo reminds them to focus, and Zero Two tells Hiro to finish off the Klaxosaur. Hiro finally notices and tells Zero Two she is being exposed. Returning to Serasis, the girls cover themselves with a towel and glare at their partners. Zero Two doesn't seem to mind, while Kokoro is more embarrassed than angry. Goro explains they didn't tell because they didn't want to distract them during the battle. Futoshi admits he didn't tell because he found Kokoro amazingly beautiful. Zorom says it's not like it hurts them to be seen, which angers Miku. As the girls shower, they discuss the situation and wonder how long the boys had been ogling them. Kokoro thinks they're taking things too far, but Miku decides she's done being around the boys and suggests they quit living alongside them. Led by Miku, the girls begin splitting the house between the boys and girls. Dr. Fra and XX, Nana, and Hachai watch from the control room. Dr. Fra and XX comments on their feud over puberty, and Hachai mentions it's unprecedented for so many members of a squad to hit puberty at once. Nana suggests intervening, but Dr. Fra and XX believes there's no point if they do. The girls confront Zero Two for ignoring the split, but tension rises when the boys, wearing only boxers, enter. Zorom dismisses Miku's request to get dressed, adding to the tension. Kokoro, troubled, waters the plants in the greenhouse and finds Mitsuru there. She tells him about the meaning of some flowers, but he seems uninterested. Miku, Ikigo, and Akuno search for food in the attic, where Akuno scolds Miku's complaints. They explore a new hallway and find sealed-off rooms labeled Keep Out. Miku questions why they're sealed. Zero Two starts to leave, but Miku stops her, questioning whose side she's on. The boys insist they were tricked, but the girls are too angry to listen. Hiro follows Zero Two to the roof, where she throws clothes into the air, making Hiro laugh. She explains she wanted to take part in a human fight and asks if she looks more human. The others continue to bicker until Nana interrupts, noting the children's differences and Hachai is surprised by Zero Two's participation. In the boys' room, Zorum is mad, and Mitsuru says they must look down on them. Hiro finds Zero Two more human and thinks pistols let Stamen handle all the controls, bearing the brunt of each battle. Hitoshi, Goro, and Zorum agree they should look after them. In the girls' room, Miku is mad, and Kokoro thinks they need to start working together again. The group meets to reconcile but notices Miku is missing. They find her hiding in one of the sealed rooms and ask her to open the door. Inside, she finds a picture of another group and panics. Zorum kicks the door in, and Kokoro goes to Miku, who recalls a previous squad and wonders what happened to them. Zero Two says they were wiped out. Miku reflects on the lilacs placed by former squad 13 members. The next day, they replace them with fresh lilacs, symbolizing friendship and fond memories. Later, Zorom and Miku bicker before entering their FRA and XX. Hiro expresses his desire to know Zero Two better, and she urges him to hold on tightly to her. Goro watches Ikigo, always trying to understand her perspective. Ikigo plays with a cat while sitting with Akuno. Futoshi excitedly announces the arrival of their annual gifts from Papa. The parasites are happy with their presence. Akuno receives books, Kokoro a sewing kit, Miku perfume, Mitsuru a pen, Zorum a ball, Futoshi food, Ikigo a plush cat, Goro a fishing rod, and Hiro a book about birds. Hiro tells Zero Two that once a year, they can ask Papa for things they want. She asks for a picture book, but Hiro explains it's an illustrated guide and suggests they look in the study. Zorum reads Papa's message congratulating and praising them, which makes everyone happy. Hiro notices that Zero Two seems unaffected by the letter. Goro sees Ikigo sitting alone and asks what she's doing. Hiro gives Zero Two Naomi's mirror as a gift, making her smile. Goro reminisces about a past incident involving Ikigo and Hiro. In a flashback, Goro writes a letter asking for a hairpin for Ikigo, but Hiro beats him to it by giving her one first. Back in the present, Goro holds the same hair clip and teases Hiro about Zero Two's smile. Hiro agrees, and Goro reflects on Ikigo's feelings for Hiro. Hiro is surprised and Goro, feeling relieved, goes to sleep. The next morning, the team is informed about a Klaxosaur approaching. During the battle, Goro notices the Klaxosaur's core and tries to attack it, but it releases Jelly, trapping him. He manages to push Ikigo out of harm's way before the Klaxosaur explodes. Later, Hiro informs Goro that Ikigo is safe but knocked out from the ejection. Ikigo bursts in, demanding to know what happened, 
and Zorom explains Goru's actions. Mana and Hachai reassure the group that Goro will be fine, but the Klaxosaur's tactic is dangerous. Zorom wants to rescue Goro first, but Hachai insists on prioritizing stopping the Klaxosaur. Hiro questions leaving Goro, but Nana confirms it's a last resort. Goro reassures it could go through the radio and she promises to save him, reflecting on his past and his feelings for Ikigo. Goro considers self-destruction but regrets not expressing his feeling. As the situation becomes critical, Ikigo appears, urging Goro to work together. Overwhelmed, Goro smiles through tears, realizing his happiness at seeing Ikigo smile. They escape together, and Goro detonates the bomb, ensuring their safety. After the battle, Ikigo bandages Goro's wounds and he hands her hair clips, admitting he wanted to give her one but couldn't. They hug, and Goro asks if they can stay like that for a while. Zoro mentions that he's been having the same dream repeatedly where he's surrounded by darkness and staring at a distant bright light. Squad 13 seconds FRA and XX units attack a Klaxosaur and easily disarm it. Before Strelizia can eliminate it, Zoro and Miku deliver the final blow. However, Zoro takes too long to pull Argentia out of the Klaxosaur. They decide to move on to the next stage of their plan. As Klaxosaur activity has been detected in the depths of the Grand Crevasse recently and it is Squad 13 Seconds duty to escort 02 to the Grand Crevasse, Papa agrees and says he will arrange for the squad to undergo maintenance at the garden. At the docking lounge, Zorom and Miku argue about their previous battle. Hiro notices that 02 seems sad and hasn't come out of the cockpit, so he asks her what's wrong. She replies that she was just thinking about something. On the other hand, the parasites gather around her, and she happily explains that they must wear their formal clothing the next day as Papa is going to award them medals. Zero Two looks indifferent and turns to leave. Before she can, Nana stops her and says that she'll arrange for her to undergo tests while they're there. However, Zero Two says that she hates the tests and always feels lousy after she takes them. At an ID gate, Hachai and Nana easily pass through. The children hesitate so Nana tells them to come along. Zorum suddenly throws himself through the gate, to the amazement of the others, but lands on the ground. At the ceremony, the mayor congratulates them and thanks them for their efforts. When he congratulates Ikigo, she says that it was everyone's effort. He tells Zero Two that their plantation is honored and that a former nine like herself has joined them. Afterward, Zorum stares at his hand. Zero Two and Hiro walk far behind the group. When Goro asks Ikigo something, she seems uncomfortable. He says that maybe he shouldn't have told her how he felt and says to not let it bother her. However, Nana tells them they must return, but Zorum wanders off and is separated. He looks at the energy source but realizes that he's been separated and cannot contact the others. The woman disinfects the house by spraying orange liquid and then offers tea and sweets. Zorum stuffs them in his mouth. He asks her various questions, and she explains that there was a time when she used to enjoy the sense of taste, but she doesn't care now. If her body gets the nutrition it needs, that's enough, she lives with her partner. She asks if he'd like to meet him. However, she brings him to a dark room where her partner lies in a machine. However, the woman explains that he's activating his brain's reward system to gain a sense of pleasure. The woman explains to a man that she treated and fed him. Afterward, Ikigo happily announces that they found Zorom, and everyone sighs in relief. Zorom rides the elevator with Nana. However, Miku enters and yells at him to take it seriously. However, he thinks that they're not pitiful. He wonders why the women felt so familiar. Eventually, he stopped thinking about it and even forgot about her. So, she returns to say he'll be there soon but notices that he's crying. He says that he doesn't know why. He recalls living in the garden. She wants to comfort him, but she stops. She says that he is mistaken, as kids are the ones protecting them by allowing this immortal environment. Zorom becomes happy and tells her that he'll keep protecting it, fighting until he eliminates all the Klaxosaurs, and then one day, he'll become an adult. He begins to ask if she can be his family when he lives in the city but stops and instead asks for her to be his friend. In the briefing room, Ikigo reports that they've eliminated 25 Conrad class Klaxosaurs. Nana thanks her and says that the S planning in their area is proceeding smoothly. Hatchai tells codes 326 and 196 that they need to improve their elimination count. Mitsuru dismisses his concerns, saying he isn't feeling well. However, Nana smiles and says that their eliminations over the past fortnight are 3.7 times greater than in their first. Hatchai says that it would be a total refutation of their previous methods. Nana replies that it might be what Dr. Franks is after. As the units stand on guard, Zoro asks what us planning is. Hiro replies that it seems like they're digging for something. Futoshi tells Kokoro that they've grown stronger, as they're on a special mission. Afterwards, an alarm suddenly sounds, and Ikigo announces that seven Conrad-class Klaxosaurs are approaching. However, Chlorophytum suddenly falls to its knees. As Mitsuru lies in bed, Hachai notes that his child's fever came sooner than expected. 
While Nana gives him an antipyretic, Hachai looks at his profile and realizes he has already had the procedure. Miku asks if he has always acted that way. Goro says no, he used to follow Hiro around. However, Goro says he doesn't know. He says that Hiro changed a little back then, too. Kokoro says that the injection has only a survival rate of 15%. However, while dreaming in the hospital bed, Mitsuru remembers telling Hiro that he wanted to be like him and fight in the Franks together. He says that he can't because he's too weak, so if he takes the injection and comes back alive, he asks if he would pilot Franks together. Afterwards, Mitsuru wakes up. The next morning, Nana notes that Mitsuru seems to be out of the woods for now. He asks the pilot for a Franks. Later, Nana suggests Squad 13 try a partner shuffle. She tells them that it's simply an option available to them. Futoshi says to Kokoro that they don't need to since he promised to protect her forever. However, Hiro asks Zero Two if something is bothering her. As he speaks, Zero Two covers his mouth and says it's annoying and they can understand each other. Mitsuru watches Hiro from far away and Akuno tells him to stop. She tells him to drop the act and that it takes courage to face up to others and himself. She says that he wants to be acknowledged by Hiro, not by Papa or the adults. Nana asks if there is anyone who wants to try piloting with a different partner. She asks Ikigo to help. Ikigo is surprised by this but reluctantly agrees. Nana agrees to let them try and asks if there's anyone else. Kokoro shyly puts up her hand and asks to try piloting with Mitsuru. A Gutenberg class Klaxosaur approaches and Hachai commands to set up a defensive line 500 meters from the S planning and neutralize the target. He says that Genista and Chlorophytum will act as rear support. As Kokoro and Mitsuru go to their Franks, Futoshi stops him and tells Mitsuru to protect Kokoro. Zero Two suddenly leaps off and attacks the Klaxosaur, but fails, causing Hiro to realize its core is too deep. She rushes in again but gets trapped, forcing Miku and Nikago to save her. Before she can attack again, Hiro tries to stop her but Zero Two tells him not to get in her way. As the large Klaxosaur lumbers on, three Conrad class Klaxosaurs get past and Futoshi goes after one of them. He tells Akuno that she's too tense, but they manage to eliminate it. Mitsuru struggles as well, and Kokoro says that there's no need to rush. Strelizia eliminates it for them, and Hiro asks if they're okay. Kokoro suggests starting over and turning to Mitsuru, her head bleeding. Mitsuru powers down, warning Kokoro not to place hope in him as he's incompetent. Despite his words, their sink levels peak, and Kokoro urges Squad 13 to work together to defeat the Klaxosaur. Later, Kokoro approaches Futoshi, but Mitsuru intervenes. Futoshi confronts Mitsuru, questioning his actions toward Kokoro and punching him. However, Futoshi collapses, expressing his deep love for Kokoro. Squad 13 looks out of the glass shield of Mistletane as Sarasas travels through heavy snow. They then see the garden as they approach it. As they walk into the lab, Miku says she saw it every day but never went inside. Kokoro says that very few children got to enter, though Hiro did a few times while Futoshi adds that Mitsuru would have gone there too. However, the Nines appear and Nine Alpha says Zero Two must be there for maintenance as well. Kokoro wonders who he is. Nana introduces the Nines and Nine Alpha says it's a pleasure to meet them. Squad 13 undergoes their tests. Hiro sits in the hallway and recalls a moment with Zero Two in the library before. Hiro asked Zero Two if something happened recently as she looked through books and threw them on the floor. Meanwhile, Nana is watching Zero Two struggle against some ape soldiers. She beats them up and orders them to get their hands off her before turning her attention to Nana. Disobeying orders, Hiro, with the other members of Squad 13 visit the garden, hoping to meet Naomi again. They have flashbacks of their childhood as they observe the children. They look through a room and see that children are already receiving parasite shots despite being so young. An adult caregiver confirms this because the recent increase of Klaxosaur attacks has made it necessary for them to develop more obedient parasite. Hiro asks her if a girl named Naomi has been returned to the garden. She says no because once a parasite leaves, it never returns. Afterwards, Nana angrily calls out to them. After she scolds them and sends them off to return to the plantation, Nine Alpha initiates a conversation with Ikigo and says it's a wonder they weren't punished for disobeying orders, and they must be different than other squads. Ikigo keeps an eye on Zero Two as she wanders throughout the house and she is startled when Zero Two violently breaks every mirror in the house. When a group of Klaxosaurs attack the garden, Squad 13 is dispatched. When they board Strelizia, Hiro notes that Zero Two's canines and horns have grown longer. During the battle, a hysterical Zero Two ignores direct orders and attacks alone, despite Hiro trying to keep her under control. Even though the Klaxosaurs were Conrad class, she goes all out on them, stabbing their remains with Strelizia's spear even after they were defeated. After the battle, Hiro asks her the meaning of her. He asks her what she means about becoming human but she refuses to answer. This initially surprises Hiro, but he grabs her and tells her that he didn't know how to express how he felt. 
However, after watching Goro and Futoshi regarding their feelings for Ikigo and Kokoro, Hiro finally understands and says he loves her. When the second wave of the Klaxosaurs attack, Squad 13 sorties again and once more Zero Two turns rogue. Hiro tries to restrain her while shouting that she can't become human. Ikigo remembers the rest of her talk with Nine Alpha, who said Zero Two is pretending to be human and she can never coexist with humans because she has consumed over a hundred stamens, and she is only using Hiro to devour his humanity. Hiro is attacked by Zero Two who begins strangling him. She says she is going to become human and find her darling from before. He deeply connects to her consciousness, and he receives visions of a past long forgotten about him and Zero Two meeting as children. While Zero Two is strangling Hiro, his mind links up with Zero Two's and reminds him of all the memories during his time in the garden. It was a closed facility where only kids lived who were supposed to become parasites or pilots of Franks. All Zero Two remembers from her past is being trapped inside a room and a person who used to take care of her and used to bring her food. The same person once gave her a picture book and all she could do was enjoy the pictures drawn in it. Meanwhile, Hiro used to live in the garden with the other kids and was one of the lower numbers, which meant his potential as a parasite was higher than the other kids. He once saw Code 15 crying in a corner for being different from the other kids because her number was lower than the others. Code 16 or Hiro cheered her up by giving her a name and he named her Ikigo. The other kids started taking interest and he eventually gave all of them their personal names. His routine consisted of doing a bunch of tests and receiving candy as a present afterward. Once he saw Zero Two being dragged away and seeing such a creature for the first time came as a surprise for him. He asked the caretakers about Zero Two, but no one answered his questions until he figured out the room where she was trapped. A few days later, Mitsuru told Hiro that he would be taking an injection and those who already had taken it knew that it could either increase their overall stats or could result in them never returning to the garden again if the experiment fails. Before leaving Mitsuru and Hiro promised to become parasites together. As days passed, Hiro's curiosity grew even more until one day he came across a room where Zero Two was getting tortured by the doctors. He finally made up his mind and climbed the tree right next to Zero Two's room. Hiro broke the window and took Zero Two out of her room to explore the world around her. It was her first time outside and everything was unfamiliar to her. She accidentally bit Hiro's hand but felt bad about it later, having no idea what to call her. Hiro took a look at the name tag on her foot and started calling Zero Two. Both of them enjoyed their time, watching fish, building snowmen and eating candies. Zero Two started to trust him to the point where she handed over the picture book to Hiro. But before he could read it to Zero Two, the guards who were looking for Zero Two arrived and the two of them had no other choice but to keep running away from them. At last, the two of them rested under a giant tree and just when they were about to change location, Hiro noticed that Zero Two was bleeding and started licking her wound, as he had read about how animals do similar things to when someone gets wounded. Hiro then promises to always stay with Zero Two and this statement makes her cry out of joy. Sadly, their happiness doesn't last long as the guards find them soon after and take the two of them back to the facility. Back to the present, after experiencing all these memories, Hiro realizes that the girl back then was actually Zero Two. After finding out that Hiro is the same darling as back then, Zero Two starts crying but just then Hiro loses consciousness and the other squad members drag Zero Two out of the franks. After returning back to the plantation, Hiro is admitted to the hospital and Nana mentions that Hiro's yellow blood cell count has gone far beyond what his human body can handle. Zero Two also gets frustrated at herself and goes to visit Hiro but is stopped by Ikigo and the others. She tells Zero Two that they will not be allowing her to visit Hiro after what she just did. Ikigo further reveals the fact that Zero Two had been making a fool out of Hiro and sucking up his life just as she did with all of her previous partners. Zero Two tries to ignore Ikigo and tries to visit Hiro but Ikigo keeps on getting in her way and eventually makes Zero Two give up. Later that day, Hiro finally gains consciousness and finds the whole squad gathered in his room. Everyone seems glad and Ikigo lets Hiro know that they won't be letting Zero Two visit him for the time being. After everyone leaves, Hiro apologizes to Mitsuru for not keeping up the promise he made back in their childhood. However, Mitsuru dismisses it and advises Hiro to not poke into others' business as much. He then remembers all the time he spent with Zero Two and decides to ask her a few things that have been on his mind. Afterward, Hachai and Nana gather the whole squad and inform them about their upcoming mission, which is to take control of an area. Furthermore, this is a joint operation with the 9 seconds and Squad 13 is scheduled to be part of the 6th wave. Before the meeting ends, Ikigo requests to kick Zero Two out of their squad and Nana informs her that Zero Two is already set to return back to the 9 seconds anyway. The next day, Ikigo pays Hiro a visit and informs him about how Zero Two will be going away soon. She also requests him not to leave the room as it is for his own good. Hiro apologizes for making the squad worried. 
back in the dorm. Zero Two contemplates how the only reason she wanted to eliminate more Klaxosaurs was so she could become a human again. Nonetheless, she realizes that Hiro is the only one she has and breaks her room door, surprising Zorom and Futoshi. After Ikigo returns to the dorm, she notices Zero Two causing a commotion and tossing the nerd aside. She requests to let her see Hiro and even though Ikigo denies her requests, the other squad members speak in Zero Two's favor and Hiro eventually agrees as well. Then, the whole squad visits Hiro's room along with Zero Two and realizes that Hiro has already escaped from his room's window. Zero Two thinks that they deceived her and becomes furious. On the other hand, Hiro arrives at the dorm and enters Zero Two's room, only to notice how everything is torn apart along with the mirror he gifted her. Hiro then returns back to his hospital room and sees Zero Two beat the crap out of the weakling. Witnessing this situation makes Hiro angry and he ends up calling Zero Two a monster. The next morning, Zero Two is set to leave along with the nine seconds and she walks past Hiro but all he can do is watch her go in silence. Soon after, he changes his mind and tries to go after her but is stopped by Ikigo who finally confesses her love to him. In the next meeting, Hachai and Nana inform the kids about a place called Grand Crevasse and show them a video where multiple Klaxosaurs can be seen appearing from Grand Crevasse. The goal of their mission is to take Grand Crevasse under their control. While watching the live feed, the squad notices the arrival of Zero Two along with the 9 seconds. After the meeting is complete, Squad 13 is also said to go out and fight the Klaxosaurs but Hiro is forced to stay behind. After arriving at the battlefield, 9 Alpha informs Ikigo that Grand Crevasse is sealed off inside a giant dome-like structure and they will have to destroy it in order to take control of Grand Crevasse. Squad 26 who are already present on the battlefield are glad to have support from Squad 13 and the leader tells his squad members to regroup. Suddenly, the Klaxosaurs start behaving weirdly and just then, a Klaxosaur which is bigger than the size of Squad 26 seconds plantation emerges from the ground. Papa and the others tell 90, the leader of Squad 26 to perform Protocol 32. Having no other choice, he is forced to obey their orders. Their whole squad grabs giant explosives and stands in front of the giant Klaxosaur planning to explode themselves along with the Klaxosaur. The explosion manages to eliminate it but the body falls on top of Plantation 13 and its head manages to enter the plantation. An unreal amount of Klaxosaurs start emerging from the giant one's mouth and enter the plantation. The whole of Squad 13 moves inside the plantation to protect the people living in the city. Not only then but Zero Two also enters the plantation but piloting Strelizia alone has made her go berserk and all she cares about now is to destroy Klaxosaurs. While the other group members are fighting for their lives, Hiro enters Zero Two's room to search for her hidden treasure but comes across the mirror he gifted her. Hiro realizes that Zero Two has already fixed it and he makes up his mind to go out and help her. Among all the giant Franks, they all notice a tiny one making its way towards Zero Two, with Hiro inside it. The Klaxosaurs toss it away which results in Hiro getting hurt. Luckily, Ikigo spots him and Goro offers to give his spot to Hiro until he meets up with Zero Two. With that being said, Hiro and Ikigo make their way towards Zero Two and Ikigo restricts her movements, allowing Hiro to go inside and check up on her. Seeing how Zero Two is not responding to him, Hiro grabs her giant horns, which makes him go through her memories yet again. After the flashbacks, Zero Two returns back to her usual self and the two finally make up, apologizing for the mean things they said to each other. The Klaxosaurs start attacking them but just then Strelizia rises in the sky and transforms into a completely new form. Soon after, Strelizia along with 9 seconds are able to destroy the dome and capture Grand Crevasse successfully. Suddenly, another humongous Klaxosaur emerges from the Grand Crevasse and crushes Plantation 13 with his hands, but some of it along with the 13 squad manages to survive. After the mission is complete, everyone returns back to the plantation and it has been a month since they got a new order from Papa. The kids have been living on their own without Nana and Hatchai. The damage dealt to the plantation has damaged the water supply and they have to restrict the use of electricity as well. Luckily, the food is delivered to them once a week but it is not the luxury items they once used to eat. Finally, it is lunchtime and Zorum complains about having to eat the same meals every single day. After returning back to the dorm, Zero Two has been friendlier with everyone and has become good friends, making them glad about how Zero Two was able to turn over a new lead. Hiro notices that Futoshi has not been eating his meals to which Futoshi replies that he has been dieting lately. Meanwhile, Dr. Franks tells Nana to not contact the children and she still fails to understand the reason and how something like this can be called a test. On the other hand, Kokoro is watering the plants when Mitsuru arrives and asks her to cut his hair. However, she fails to do the job correctly and turns the handsome-looking guy into a complete dweeb. After she is done cutting his hair, 
Kokoro kisses him without any warning and apologizes right after. Zero Two and Hiro also walk by the trees and Hiro informs Zero Two that Sakura will soon start growing on those trees and upon learning that their color matches her hair, she is excited to see them. Later that day, everyone gathers in the dorm and Ikigo informs them that there are only five resources for water and two of them are only usable with filtering. The difficulties they are facing make everyone remember the time Nana used to live with them and take care of all their needs. Nonetheless, they have no other choice but to make things work and Zero Two proposes to cook their own food by catching fish from the river. Everyone likes the idea and starts preparing food after learning the basics from cooking books. Zero Two, Goro, and Hiro manage to catch some fish. After they are done cooking, everyone takes a bite and realizes how tasty it is. Zorom feels proud to think that they might be the only squad who have cooked their own food and Zero Two verifies it. While everyone is eating dinner, Futoshi accidentally breaks his plate and Zorom uses this opportunity to confront Futoshi about his health. He had found out that the dieting thing was an excuse as every time he tries to eat food, Futoshi just ends up throwing up. Zorom ends up getting frustrated and starts crying, thinking why Papa or the others have left them alone and aren't coming to get them. After dinner, everyone discusses how there is a possibility that Papa has cast their squad aside, but Hiro tells them to not lose hope as if all of them work together. They can achieve much more just like they were able to cook their own meal. The 9 seconds greet Squad 13, revealing that they're here to stay on behalf of Papa. This eases up the children as they realize that Papa hasn't yet abandoned them. Later, Zero Two and Hiro share a quiet exchange in her room. As they gaze at the flickering candle flame, Hiro admires the flower headband made by Miku. Despite Hiro's initial shyness, he allows her to see his blue horns. Reflecting on the changes Hiro has brought to her life, Zero Two confesses her longing to become human was driven by her desire to reunite with Hiro. However, she regrets believing that killing Klaxosaurs was the path to humanity. As they share a kiss and rest their foreheads together, Hiro's crappy drawing of a king brings laughter to their moment. Later in the greenhouse, Kokoro and Mitsuru spend some time alone. For once Mitsuru mans up and tells Kokoro that he'd be sad if their lives changed as they won't have peaceful moments like these. Kokoro considers herself wrist and goes on to touch Mitsuru's body, noting how a man's body is different from a woman's body. As she tries to take things further, Mitsuru freaks out and tells her that Jesus didn't just die for them to clap without marriage. Zorom catches them in the act and tell Mitsuru that he's on water duty. Mitsuru and Hiro go to the lake to get water but end up bathing in it. Mitsuru talks to Hiro about how Kokoro is trying to take his Excalibur out for a ride which makes Hiro wonder if they're in love. This prompts Mitsuru to think back on all those moments he shared with her. Upon arriving back, the squad gathers around to confront Mitsuru, revealing that Zorom told them what happened before they could talk about it. The nine seconds barge in as Nine Alpha holds Kokoro's book on having babies. In the end, Kokoro breaks down and states that she wants to have a baby. Nine Alpha calls her a foul human being for it and says that it's banned by Papa but Kokoro insists that they have organs for that very reason. All of a sudden Nana and Hachai burst in to take Kokoro. They reveal to her that the reason why they left them on their own was because Dr. Franks ordered them to. Meanwhile, a group of adults enter a cave where they're murdered by the Klaxosaur's princess. Later, Mitsuru finds Kokoro crying. The two embrace each other and end up doing the deed. Zero Two shows Hiro a picture of a bride that she drew in her room. Ikuno sits on the porch with her head on her hands. On the other hand, Papa and the vice chairman sit on Cosmos and Papa says that the Klaxosaur princess chose to go down the path of annihilation. The vice chairman says they'll feel the pain of having their earth destroyed by their own creation. The nine seconds that visited the 13th plantation appear and Nine Alpha says there's something he needs to know. The next morning, Hachai calls Ikigo and informs her that their group will be going to the parasite camp when the next ship arrives. She informs everyone about it and they reminisce about the past, thinking about how they will be forced to leave the place where they made so many memories. But before they leave the place forever, Mitsuru and Kokoro plan on marrying each other and everyone thinks of it as a wonderful idea, wanting to plan and prepare for it themselves. For the wedding dress, Zero Two plans on using white bed sheets while Mitsuru shapes an old wire into a ring. The boys start slacking off and begin playing football instead of preparing for the wedding. Meanwhile, Akuno is lying in her bed when Ikigo pays her a visit, asking if her condition is better than before. She praises her for doing the right thing and slapping Nine Alpha as he was saying some really mean things. Akuno clears up the misunderstanding and tells Ikigo that she didn't do it for Kokoro but for herself. To answer her question, Ikuno pins Ikigo down on the bed and confesses her love. This comes as a surprise to Ikigo but Akuno informs her that the kids in the garden used to bully her because her name was Akiro back then. But it was Ikigo who saw her dealing with all the pain and changed her name from Akuro to Akuno. From that day forward, Akuno has liked Ikigo. She then starts crying and apologizing for being such a creep. 
However, Ikigo gives her a hug and lets Akunu know that she understands the thing she is going through as she herself has experienced these feelings before. Later that day, the gang finished the preparations for the wedding and they all took a group photo afterward. Hiro and Zero Two get dressed up for the wedding and go to see the cherry blossoms one last time before they leave the plantation. Meanwhile, Mitsuru is waiting for Kokoro to arrive and is left in shock after seeing her in a wedding dress for the first time. Everyone who is waiting outside starts ringing the bells and the both of them slowly walk towards the stage. Hachai, who is looking over them from the control room, notices the arrival of an assault ship at the plantation. Apparently, nine seconds are the ones leading them and they will be forcing Mitsuru and Kokoro into a re-indoctrination program to erase their memories. After exchanging rings with each other, Kokoro and Mitsuru are about to kiss each other but the moment is ruined when a bunch of armed guys appear at the scene. Their behavior makes Zero too furious and she tries to fight the whole 9 seconds team on her own but eventually is defeated by them. After Mitsuru and Kokoro are taken away, the other group members also pack their bags and prepare to leave the plantation for good. Meanwhile, Hachai pays Nana a visit to the jail cell and questions her about what he could have done to help those children if he possessed emotions. On the other hand, the whole Squad 13 is gathered at the Parasite Camp and Ikigo receives a notification of Kokoro's and Mitsuru's release. When all of them go to meet them, they realize how their memories have been altered and they don't remember anything about each other. Dr. Franks was not told about the memory alteration and he confronts the higher-ups about it but gets shut down instead. This reminds him of his old days when everyone used to live peacefully and he was called Dr. Frank. The chairman of where he worked once called him and told him how he was hired by a group of scientists with no origins or nationalities, who called themselves Ape. The Ape group started digging manga energy from underground and introduced a new source of energy to the world. This resulted in them gaining quite a large amount of followers worldwide. One day, another scientist by the name of Karina met Frank and the two of them were hired to work on the same project. He was later told that the project was supposed to make immortality a reality among humans via the use of magma energy. After working for a while, they were able to achieve good results and announced their research as a success. However, Frank was not quite happy about it as mankind could have lost its ability to reproduce in exchange for immortality. He questioned if the thing humans became after gaining immortality could even be called humans. Later, immortality was made public and only the rich could have access to it. Soon after, the laws that restricted reproduction were passed and it was the first step toward mankind abandoning its procreative instincts. After a few years, humanity's immortality rate had already exceeded 70% and that was when Frank went on a date with Karina. She proposed to him on the spot, and even though it took some effort to make the thick skull doctor understand, the two of them eventually started dating. Unfortunately, mankind soon faced its greatest trail when Klaxosaurs started emerging on the Earth's surface. Everyone soon figured out that their appearance was related to magma energy and humans started building plantations to live on the planet and eventually, life on the surface was abandoned. Frank then started working on making Franks that could fight against the Klaxosaurs and Karina was one of the people who tested it for Frank. However, she ended up losing her life in one of those tests. Soon after, they found the correct way to use Franks, which resulted in the foundation of gardens where children were nurtured. At that point, Frank had engrossed himself to find a more perfect life form. He then got to know about the Klaxosaur Queen and went to meet her. As expected, she eliminated everyone who accompanied Frank and wished to meet him alone. After smelling him, she realized that he had committed some grave sins and had eliminated a lot of her brethren. As a punishment, she ripped his arm off and sent him as a messenger to other humans, warning them to not lay a hand on Klaxosaurs anymore. Back in the present, Hyrule along with the others went to confront Papa and asked them to revert Kokoro and Mitsuru's memories, but they refused to do so. In the end, Papa agrees to let the kids live the life they want if they are able to complete the last mission they will be given. Nana's replacement explains to Squad 13 that the star entity is now under their control, and they'll be booting it up the next day. However, the Frank squads are tasked with keeping all enemies away from it. Afterward, Miku asks where Nana is, and she replies that she is Nana. She introduces herself as Code 7 and says that she's been appointed the new caretaker of Squad 13. Hachai tells Dr. Franks that Ringhorny is ready for action. However, Dr. Franks asks if a massive spear built using Klaxus or cores was necessary. On D-Day, at Bird Nest, all the parasites from every plantation attend the assembly. The vice chairman says that Ape has always desired peace and prosperity for mankind. After the assembly, the Nines mock Squad 13 by telling them that they are not special. Zero two steps forward and says they're all stronger than them since they have their eyes on the future. However, an announcer says that a Klaxosaur pack is headed towards Grand Crevasse. All the parasites activate their Franks and begin heading out. At the Grand Crevasse ruins, the Franks attack the Klaxosaurs. Afterwards, Hyro, Zero two, Dr. Franks, and Hatchai go down an elevator with Strelizzi. 
Hiro and Zero Two discuss their plans and Zero Two says she doesn't care as long as they're together. Nevertheless, as they reach the bottom of Grand Crevasse, Zero Two hears something coming and they leave. One of the snake Klaxosaurs breaks through the wall, but one says she won't allow them to do so. On the other hand, Strelizia tries to open a gate, but can't. One catches up and pulls Zero Two out, saying that she's a duplicate who does not realize she is being used by the invaders. One says she isn't fit to pilot their child before throwing her out. Hiro asks one how she can pilot Strelizia. One says it was originally one of their brethren. Her horns begin glowing and she sends a message to the pilots. Dr. Frank says that he found that the Klaxo Sapiens split into two forms. One returned to the earth and became energy. However, Nine Alpha tells one not to talk down to Papa. Dr. Franks finishes that the other form consumed that energy and evolved physically and stopped mingling with one another and lost their intelligence. Hatchai asks what they are, and he says weapons built by the Klaxo Sapien. They are composed of one male and one female Klaxo Sapien. The female's soul connected to the weapon and the male's soul took root in the core, the cockpit. However, Klaxosaurs begin popping out from the ground and shooting into space. They shoot spaceships in the sky. Star Entity wakes up and Dr. Frank says it's beautiful. One says that the humans made her ugly. However, she says a long time ago when they were attacked by invaders from the expanse of space, they fought and drove them off and then holed up in the earth to prepare. They shot at a VIRM fleet. They shoot back and one says that she won't let them touch their planet. It shoots back and destroys it. Papa says it's futile and she asks what VIRM did to their child. Papa and the Vice Chairman's masks fall. And the Vice Chairman says that Star Entity is a mass of life that could disturb the universe's peace. Papa says that if the Klaxus or Princess took over the implantation process, they programmed it to explode. They say that the planet will explode and leave nothing behind. Papa says that they'll take them to eternal paradise. The Vice Chairman announces that it is VIRM's will for Star Energy, which is a mass of life that could disturb the universe's peace. However, he also says that the time has come for humans to embrace their evolution. The three fall to the ground after their souls are absorbed by VIRM and the souls of the adults in the plantations are absorbed, eliminating them all. However, Hiro curses as one struggles. He connects to her consciousness and sees that her mind resembles a galaxy. Zero Two walks along looking for Hiro despite bleeding from the injury of her arm. The VIRM begins attacking the Klaxosaurs and numerous parasites are eliminated as well. Squad 13 wonders who they should be fighting and Hatchai wonders how much time is left and Dr. Franks calculates the countdown which is 72 minutes. Hiro asks one about VIRM and how long she'd been alive. One says that it has been more than 60 million years. They inhabited Earth as an advanced civilization. Dr. Franks says that one is the sole survivor of the Klaxo Sapiens, and she is her clone. She was created to operate Star Entity on behalf of humans as it can only be operated by a Klaxo Sapien. However, Squad 13 is confronted by the 9 seconds. Alpha asks why they are not in their positions and orders them to follow Papa's orders. Zero Two announces she is going to rescue Hiro and doesn't care about anything else because she and Hiro made a promise to be together forever. Dr. Franks says he will go too. Afterward, the Franks broke through while taking down two VIRM soldiers. However, Dr. Franks says Zero Two, Hiro, and the princess may be able to create a miracle, but this is just a theory. Suddenly, more VIRM start following them and they run into a corridor that is caved in. Takoro says she will stay behind to defend them but Miku refuses to let her throw her life away and Mitsuru tells Kokoro to let everyone work together. Afterwards, Pringhorny begins flying. Alpha asks Papa to say something. Dr. Franks and Zero Two arrive at the Star Entity entrance. A VIRM tries to attack them, and Delphinium fights it, losing a limb in the process, but lunges at the VIRM and both fall down a shaft. Dr. Franks sacrifices his arm to open the door as it contains one's cells. One of the princess snakes approaches them and offers Zero Two to ride with it and Dr. Franks tells her to go. She asks him if he took her to Plantation 13 to reunite her with Hyro. She says that whatever the reason was, she thanks him for creating her and helping her meet Hyro. As they arrive at Star Entity's core, where Strelizia is, the snake throws Zero Two out and it gets eliminated. She opens the door to Strelizia and sees Hyro is nearly consumed by the virus. She tries to revive him and begs for him to wake up, realizing he is close to elimination and is covered in blood. The countdown ends and Hatchai says that they'd run out of time. Zero Two's horns break free, and her skin turns red, and she kisses him. One watches them and says she understands what Hyro meant. By casting aside their bodies and emotions, they believed they could achieve strength and emerge victorious. She sacrifices herself by giving the rest of her strength to them and staking the planet for them. In their consciousness, the two reunite under a mistletoe tree after keeping their promise. However, VIRM takes their leave and withdraws. Papa says that they will bring back their army to destroy all of Earth. 
Pringhorny begins to fly away and Strelizia tries to stop it, but it escapes. The other squad 13 Franks and pilots are seen to have survived their siege. Hyra tries to feed Zero too, but she won't open her mouth. He notices blood oozing through her clothes and rolls up her sleeves to find a mysterious cut he can't explain. The parasites of Plantation 13 hold a meeting about their supplies and resources. Miku suggests they increase the rations but Ikigo replies that they won't because they have enough rations for another year. However, a girl runs up to Ikigo and says they have a problem. Ikigo goes to see the Nines, who are gravely ill and bedridden, saying she heard they refused to eat since the day before. Alpha answers that they need maintenance rather than food. Goro goes to the new Nana for more water and maintenance, but she refuses, saying she needs Papa's approval. Though Goro says that they might die, she doesn't change her mind and is indifferent. Hiro finds more cuts on her arm. The next day, as the parasites work in the field, Ikigo notices how tired Akuno looks and advises her not to push herself. They are then interrupted by something crashing into the earth. They find a VIRM soldier and Klaxosaur in a crater, as both have killed each other. A group of Klaxosaur spaceships fly into the sky. Kokoro becomes nauseous again and collapses in Miku's arms. The next day, as Miku and Akuno tend to other parasites, Goro yells for them to come quickly. Afterward, they find all their crops have withered despite following the instructions. They see a carrier ship and run to find Nana, who is in a wheelchair, and Hachai. In a flashback, Nana and Hachai enter a room together under Dr. Franks's orders. Hachai finds a database of adults and all their memories have been copied and archived. They travel to the room where the children, including Naomi, who are deemed unfit, are in a cryostasis state. Miku cries and asks her to save them. Hachai inspects the fields and tells them that the extraction of magma energy has stripped the soil of life. However, Goro gives Akuno pills, and she says that Ikigo collapsed from overwork. Hiro spots Zero Two standing in the rain and runs off, leaving Goro behind. Hiro grabs Zero Two's hand and tries to get her to come inside. Hachai and Goro discover the ruins of Mistletane through a satellite camera. Hachai says Mistletane contains soil from the planet before it became a desert and that they can use that to grow crops. Hachai notices Hiro in the doorway. When Goro tells Squad 13, they become excited. Miku is confused, and Hiro explains her body is in her room, but her mind is with Strelizia, which makes Goro more confused. Hiro says he will be using a Klaxosaur ship the Klaxosaurs left behind. Squad 13 tells him that it is a dangerous mission in which he will probably get eliminated. Miku, Futoshi, Akuno, and Zorom sit outside together and watch a meteor shower. Miku wonders if they'll ever find something that they're willing to die for but Akuno says it's different for everyone. Afterward, Nana comes across a traumatized parasite girl and forces herself out of her wheelchair to comfort the girl. The next morning, Hiro gets ready to leave when he is met by his squad mates waiting for him, dressed in their parasite suits. Afterward, they explain that they have decided to go with him to rescue Zero Two. Zorum says they are not doing this for Hiro, but they want to take out VIRM in revenge. However, Goro says that everything changes like the flow of the river which is why they decided to reach out. It is finally the time for the final battle. Before everyone leaves for the battle, Mitsuru and Kokoro decide to stay on Earth. They are now taking care of the empty shell of Zero Two that is present on Earth. After testing their Franks in space, the whole team feels like their movement is much better and they are able to control the Franks more freely. At the same time, Hachai and Nana are present in space as well, traveling in one of the Klaxosaur ships and discussing how the Klaxosaurs left the protection of Earth on mankind. Apparently, Hiro is riding the Franks with 9 seconds as they are able to act as both stamens and pistols. While riding the Klaxosaur ship, Hachai notices that the controls are very similar to how humans build their ships but the thing they can't figure out is the reason everyone including a Puse is headed toward Mars. Suddenly, a giant enemy ship arrives in front of them and fires an energy beam directly at the ship. Luckily, the Klaxosaur ship has a built-in shield that protects both Hachai and Nana. On the other hand, Squad 13 is tasked with protecting Apuse until Hyro makes contact with it. Hyro along with the others move towards Apuse and eliminate every VIRM they come across but Apuse still keeps on receiving continuous damage, just when they start having trouble fighting that many enemies alone. The rest of the 9 seconds arrive and assist them in the fight. The VIRM tries to block Hyro's path but the squad creates an opening for him, allowing Hyro to arrive right next to Apuse. Just when they are about to get closer, another VIRM attacks his Franks. However, the size of the VIRM is too big for normal attacks to work. Ultimately, Nine Alpha throws Hyro inside a Puse and after saying his goodbyes, he gets close to the VIRM and self-destructs. Hyro then moves to the control room and sits on his seat, which makes the Zero Two on Earth move aimlessly as well. The wires emerging from the control room start interacting with Hyro and he realizes that it is Zero Two trying to talk to him. She tells him that the two of them can't stay together anymore as she is a monster and wants Hyro to remain human. 
On the other hand, the main ship starts getting attacked as well and while running away, Hatchai ends up getting injured. Eventually, the two of them manage to escape in a pod and realize that the ship they were just on is a bomb. Even when it's raining heavily, Kokoro decides to stay by Zero Two's side as it is the only thing she can do to contribute to the fight her friends are currently fighting. The dweeb decides to stay by Kokoro's side as well and gives her a hug after saying some sweet words. Meanwhile, Zero Two keeps on refusing to stay with Hiro but he informs her that the two of them will rewrite the story and be together no matter what. The statement makes her cry and she finally agrees, making her body on earth turn into a statue. Their partnership transforms Apuse and turns it into a gross-looking Franks. Apuse manages to defeat most of the VIRM when suddenly, two laser beams from a satellite connect and open a portal to another solar system. Hiro and Zero Two inform everyone that they will be going through that gate and entering VIRM's territory along with the bomb to end this war once and for all. Several days have passed since they entered the solar system and Hiro notices that he doesn't feel hunger or anything, making him realize that he might have completely turned into a Klaxosaur. However, they soon are confronted by enemies and their fight starts. Meanwhile, everyone else returns back to Earth and starts preparing for Kokoro's pregnancy. Eventually, the kids start exploring the Earth and start growing their own food via planting. Meanwhile, Ikuno gathers all the documents for her personal research. A few days later, Ikigo and Goro talk about how the two of them wish they could do anything to help Hiro and Zero Two as they are still fighting. 245 days have passed since Apuse went into the solar system and it is also the day when Kokoro finally gave birth. Mitsuru hurries to the delivery room and starts bawling after looking at his daughter for the first time. The boys later congratulate him for being Papa number one. Later, the facility that was holding the children who had disappeared opened its gates and everyone was free including Naomi, Hiro's first first ever partner. Goro also decided to travel the world on his own in order to find some stuff that might help them in the near future. Before he leaves, Goro walks up to Ikigo and gives her a kiss, surprising everyone present. It has now been more than 700 days since they entered the portal and just when they reach the enemy's home planet, Hiro's connection with Zero Two starts breaking off which disrupts the functionality of a puse. Back on Earth, Kokoro's daughter starts shifting her attention towards the statue of Zero Two and calls Darling which confuses the two of them as their daughter has not yet learned that word. Luckily, they soon realize that it might have something to do with Zero Two and Hiro. With that being said, all the squad members gather next to the statue and pray for their safety and success. Their prayers end up working and the connection between the two restores, allowing them to dash towards the enemy's home planet. But before they can't make the bomb go off, VIRM starts attacking a puse and they somehow manage to change its form once again. They enter the enemy planet with their new Franks and eventually explode, putting an end to that planet. Squad 13 on Earth realizes that it might really be over this time after a bright light starts shining in the sky and Zero Two's statue disappears. The Klaxosaurs return back to Earth and went underground after the battle. Eight years have passed since that day and humans have slowly started to rebuild the planet. While everyone is growing up, Nana and Hatchai remain the same due to their immortality ability and decide to look over the upcoming generation. Meanwhile, Zoram and Miku have become school teachers. Ikigo is also pregnant with Goru's child and Futoshi also has a family of his own. Ikuno's research has also allowed the ex-parasites to keep their accelerated aging in check and allow them to live a normal life. This was all about little pilots. Will Hiro and Zero Two reincarnate? Comment Franks below and let us know if you enjoyed watching the show. Make sure to like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.